Okay, today I've decided to run for president. Just kidding. Today I've decided to show you the best sourcing strategy that you can use to find profitable items with a lot of profit and especially you'll find items that are selling for Facebook Marketplace as well as for eBay. It can be used to determine if a supplier has hot selling items or not. And if they do, which most likely every supplier has something that sells, it helps you to determine what the product is. In fact, I was using this exact method that I'm going to teach you today step by step when I found one item that made me $6,000 in net profit when I was drop shipping it on Amazon. So if you're confused about how to find profitable items or don't know how to you know, tackle sourcing, watch this video until the very end as I'm gonna show you everything step by step. And if at the end you're still confused about finding profitable items, simply drop me a comment below as always and I'll be happy to get back to you. Hi, my name is Lucas. I make videos about e-commerce and since you're watching this, I have a strong feeling that you might enjoy the rest of my content as well. So if you're new here, please subscribe. It means the world to me. Let's get started. So like I mentioned before, this method is universal and can be used for sourcing profitable and hot selling products for eBay and Facebook Marketplace. You'll have to sign up for Zik Analytics. It is a pay tool, but they offer a two week trial for just $1 and then they give you the first month half price, which is $15. Also, I think this doesn't overlap. So this gives you six weeks of the best sourcing software on the market right now for 16 bucks. It honestly does not get any better than that. But perhaps most importantly, if you make it your goal to source daily or perhaps every other day and you really dedicate all the time that you have to source profitable items, these six weeks, these $16, will give you more than enough time to generate thousands of dollars in profit. So here's our source. Step one, you'll need a notepad. You can make it an Excel sheet, whatever you prefer. And this notepad will be your seller list. Think of this list as the library of all dropshippers that you'll ever come across on eBay. And just like a library, you'll have different sections on the seller list depending on where the dropshipper is sourcing their items from. So now you want to start creating these sections. So say, uh, we'll start with Webstron store. Uh, then we're gonna add Walmart and then we're gonna add Amazon. Now here, just put as many suppliers as you have. Now this may obviously overlap because not every dropshipper just uses one supplier, but that's okay. As long as the dropshipper is sourcing from your particular supplier that you're trying to source from, you're gonna put him in that subsection of that supplier on your seller list. All right, let's get to step number two. For step number two, you need to find a dropshipper that is sourcing from the same supplier that you wanna source from. So for the sake of this example, we decided to go with Webstron Store. So I'm gonna go to Webstron Stores and I'm gonna select this product. Something that is exclusive to Webstron Store. So it's, you know, mostly restaurant equipment, big freezers, some cooking equipment, some really specific kitchen stuff. The pro tip, you can go to the supplier's homepage and usually they'll have brands listed. Usually a big portion of these brands are exclusive to that supplier. So no matter what item you choose, you should be good to go. And again, this can be totally random product. Once you have it, copy the title and put it into eBay. Press enter and you'll get a list of people that are drop shipping using your supplier. Straight out of the gate, you wanna look for stock photos with white background and you wanna make sure that the prices are higher than on your supplier's website. That's how you determine that they're drop shipping it because obviously the price is inflated. They use the same photos and in most cases, like 99%, they'll also use the same description. Now you wanna open every single listing that you see on the front page. It doesn't matter if it's just one seller or two sellers or if it's 25 sellers. You just wanna open every single listing into a new tab and skip only those listings that sell for the same price as on the supplier's website or lower. And once you open every single tab, you copy the name of the seller with their feedback and you put it on your seller list. Now once you have say 30 to 50 dropshippers that are using the same supplier, you can move on to step number Three. So now you have a list of 30 plus dropshippers that are using the same supplier that you want to use. In this step, you're going to scan through every single one of these stores using Zik Analytics by going into the competitor research tab. Set the criteria to 30 days and then scan through every single seller. The items will be automatically sorted depending on how many times they sold within the last 30 days. And you start at the top and you go down to find the source of every single item that fits your criteria. For eBay, I recommend items that sold at least three times in the last 30 days. For Facebook Marketplace, it does not really matter. It's a bit more blue ocean. You can pretty much list anything and see what happens. After you find a source, you wanna make sure that the item is profitable. And this depends on a couple of factors. If you're not tax exempt with the supplier, 
you'll have a different break-even point. If you don't have a cashback credit card, you're gonna have a different break-even point. So there is a lot of factors, this is not one shoe fits all type of scenario. So you really need to do your own due diligence and determine your break-even point with these suppliers. Also, do not worry about being the cheapest. You don't have to be the cheapest, neither on eBay and definitely not on Facebook Marketplace. If you wanna undercut people, undercut them by one penny, but you don't have to drive the price down. If the item is profitable, you can put it on your sourcing sheet, could be an Excel spreadsheet, or you can list it directly onto your listing software, whatever that may be. Because if you follow the process, you found a dropshipper that is using the same supplier that you wanna be using, we found the source, we verified that the item is profitable and you just found a listing that sold X amount of times in the last 30 days that you can list on your own store, whether that's eBay or Facebook Marketplace and make profit with it. The step number four is super easy. You repeat this process with every single seller. You find every single item and once you find and determine if it's profitable or not, you then list it on your store. If you're running out of sellers on your sell list, what you can do as well, instead of just you know going for an item and then trying to find somebody who dropships that, you can go to any dropshipper on that list that you verified is sourcing from the supplier that you want to source from, and you can click on this button. And what it's gonna do is gonna pull every single listing with the same title. Now, what this tells you, like, you just found three or four, five, maybe more other dropshippers that are sniping each other that are also using this supplier. So you just copy their names again and you put them on your seller list. By repeating this simple process, you'll never run out of dropshippers and you'll never run out of items to source from. But the most important thing is to compile your seller list. Here are a few tips I can give you to maintain your list. I would perhaps not copy every single seller. If the dropshipper has less than 70 to 100 feedback or more than 10,000, in most cases I will not include them into my seller list. Second tip, when you're checking these sellers and you determine that they're not that profitable as they seemed at the beginning, you can just make a note into your list that you know their profit margins are crap and that you don't want to go back to the seller again. However, if you do this long enough, you're going to find the stores that have really good profit margins, they're always having new items, they're sourcing from really interesting suppliers, and you'll find new suppliers through this process as well, because they're going to be selling an item that sold like 20 times in the last month, and then you find out that they're sourcing this from this website that you've never even considered to source from. But since they're selling such a big volume, you might, you know, hop on the bandwagon, so to speak, and start dropshipping that item as well from that new supplier that you just discovered by using this method. That's how I found that one item that made me $6,000 in just one month when I was sourcing it from eBay, and then I took it and I put it on Amazon because nobody was selling it there. And the rest, well, you know the rest. I bought this fancy pan phone case for my iPhone. Hello? Now Zik is super powerful and this process is so simple that literally anybody can pick it up quickly and you know if you spend a week or two weeks listing every single day you're gonna become a professional in finding stuff that other people cannot find. I get so many messages from people telling me that they cannot find profitable products with like 20 plus percent. Especially on eBay this is super simple. One tip I can give you is using Spanish titles if you're doing Amazon to eBay. By default, every listing with a Spanish title is more expensive than the same item being dropshipped with an English title. And from my experience, the most profitable items that you can dropship from Amazon to eBay, if you're still doing this super outdated business model, they're in supplements, they're like this penis enlargement pills, all the gels and all the stuff, everybody seems to be happy. You've seen the feedback on my eBay accounts, I gotta say, it kinda seems that the pills are working. Anyway, the reason why I'm saying that you can use this method for listing, for sourcing for Facebook Marketplace is because eBay and Facebook Marketplace share a lot of commonalities. First, Facebook Marketplace started out as this garage sale of the internet, which is what eBay was for the longest time. So by default, we can assume that both of these platforms are attracting the same type of buyers. So once we have determined that one particular item sells really well on eBay, we can assume that it's gonna sell well on Facebook Marketplace as well. Now, if you're gonna list the item on Facebook Marketplace, I recommend to try to see if the supplier that you're sourcing from has pictures in the review sections that you could use for the main photo on Facebook. Because from my experience, stock images 
don't perform as well as a regular photo taken on a phone just because they don't fit with the other items on Facebook Marketplace. If something is not clear, be sure to drop me a comment below or you can try to contact me on Instagram and I'll see you as always in the... Wait, hold up. Hello?